All right, let's see if that worked. Oh no, I forgot I got a new build, new install of OBS, new motherboard, new everything, and now I'm not sure if I'm streaming to the right place. Eek. All right, I'm just gonna. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna check. I'm gonna let on this, uh, let this kind of go and see. Uh, in the meantime, let me open up some notes here. I don't have anything really planned today, but I do have a few ZBrush notes I wanna go over. Let's see, CG, where's my notes? ZBrush. R8 notes, no. Why would I be having R8 notes? There it is, 2020. Hey Bertram, so I'm 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 on and I'm streaming on the on the right place, right? Yay! Okay, <laughs> I am. Everything's named correctly. Whew. Okay, my notes were correct. So let me go ahead and close this down. We got this, and we got these notes. Okay. Uh, so basically, what happened was I got a new motherboard. So we're running on the AMD Ryzen Threader for 3970X. Um, 32 core processor, higher clock speed, no more Numa nodes. Um, <laughs> I only have 64 gig of RAM because for some reason they took a half inch around my, um, around the, so the, you got the dims here for your RAM and then you have your uh, little place for your CPU to go and they move those in about a half an inch from the previ previous motherboard. So all of my cooling solutions cover up at least one dim, if not two, my air cooling Noctura, uh, whatever that's called. Uh, which works fine on the CPU, uh, covers up two dims, and then my Kraken water cooling system covers up one. So I have not all my RAM in there, but hey, everybody, good morning. Glad the stream's working. Oh, that's, I need to go through and update my notes because the first uh, stream thing that I put in was incorrect. Okay, so we got ZBrush 2020. We got a brand new computer-ish, most of it. And uh, I'm just going to go through my notes real quick here. There was one really cool thing that I wanted to cover that um, that wasn't like really apparent in some of the previous ZBrush stuff. And that is, for example, if we go over here to Load Tool, oops, and we say Recording, uh, now let's go to Streaming. We'll go back to our old Turtle Power. And yeah, we'll stick with Bebop for now. I think I've got everything on here. Got everything copied over here. So here's where we're doing the demo. <laughs> we gave him some sweet pants here. I'm going to go into Subtool. I'm going to turn off Polypaint for everything. And for example, I guess this will work. So I'm going to go ahead and take his body here. So what you used to have to do is if you had a uh, body like this, and let's go ahead and say it was uh, just Dynameshed. So we have a Dynamesh version of our body here and we can go ahead and hit Control W, make it all one poly group. So we're going through and we're sculpting on this and then we want to do a, a Z remesh and project. So now what we can do, now that we have history involved, is we can go through here, let's go ahead and just, uh, let's clean up the sculpt a little bit here. So we'll go through here and I'm just gonna add some history just so I have some stuff going on here. Go through our Damien Standard brush. And I'll put in a little bit of striations here, maybe go into our clay brush. Kind of build this up a little bit. Shift to smooth. Let's switch this over to smooth stronger. And ooh, it's a little uncomfortable right here. Hold on. So we got all this going. Uh, and then we want to go ahead and do a uh, let's go ahead and turn the intensity down. We want to do like a Z remesh and project. So it used to be what you have to do is go over here and duplicate this off and then have these two showing. And then go through here and like Z remesh at that size down a little bit. And we'll say this should be maybe, I don't know, 8K. Uh, keep groups off because we don't have any groups and we'll just zero mesh this result and then you would go through and you can project and I guess since we're talking about it we'll just go ahead and let it let it happen here <laughs> uh, stream at 4 a.m. when the hell do you wake up and do you skip sleep well for me it's really 6 a.m. well I still wake up at 5 15 a.m. especially this morning when I woke up at probably a 5 a.m. with my uh, dog kicking me in the back um, so she wakes me up Whenever she feels like it, but um, yeah, it's actually 6 a.m. for me right now. I'm in Austin, Texas, so it's not not too terrible. Hey, pro, thanks for showing up. Uh, but 
it's still early, man. Don't don't confuse that with like, oh, I'm wake up and click my heels and run upstairs and start streaming. It's just, you know, this is when it works. Uh, I dismiss that. So uh, in the old days, we have to go over here and we have to zebra mesh this, and then we have these two showing. Uh, and of course, you can always you can have these two showing as long as you can go into solo mode as long as this one is, has the visibility icon. You can go through here, and then you can do your. Ooh, I need to change by uh, custom menu. You can go over here to project, project all, and you're going to see now we have geometry and color and history in here. So now I can hit uh, Control D, and then do another project all, and then Control D project all and we're basically getting our detail back on our new low res geometry now instead of doing that let's go ahead and delete that now since we have history uh, we can go ahead and just keep it all within the same sub tool so again we're in here and um, let's make this let's put in let's see a uh, standard brush lazy radius up turn L to turn it off you can put in some a little bit of detail here I'm just trying to get some obvious um, detail here so uh, we have our object here so instead of duplicating this off and doing all that, we can just stay, let me move this down, sorry. We can just stay on this subtool. So now let's go back in here to Ziri Mesh. Uh, we'll do it over here. So geometry, Ziri Mesher. Uh, again, we'll turn off half. We'll take adapt to size down. I, I like nice even quads, but sometimes on organic stuff, especially around these ears, uh, we might need a little bit more not perfect square quads, but maybe it can build us some smaller quads to pick up some detail in those areas. So I'm just gonna—I'm not gonna turn it down to zero, uh, but I'm gonna turn it down a bit. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and save the target polygon count. We'll go ahead and try 8K again. That seemed to work. Um, again, keep groups you can turn on if you have poly groups and you wanted to like slice through here and put a ring around his neck and his wrist and his shoulders or his musculature if you ever wanted to get that detailed. Uh, so, or and you can also you turn on use poly paint. I wonder why all that was on. I'm gonna, you know what, I'm gonna, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn all that off, and I'm gonna collapse all these menus, because I don't want those. Oh, you know what, it was on because I saved the Z tool. I think the last time I used Z Remesh. Um, but also, I don't like having all this project stuff open. So I'm gonna do a really quick preference, config, store config, and then uh, we'll go back in here to our geometry Z Remesher. So, uh, we have all this set up, target polygon, right? Blah, blah blah. And again, we're on the same sub tool. We just have a bunch of history on here, and we're going to hit Ziri Mesh. And again, we'll let this go. Uh, how can you put different characters in one scene? There's a couple different ways you can do that, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, how I would do it is uh, moving in folders. So we have our new geometry here, and now what we can do is we can we can, I'm going to go back to this uh, history here, and you're going to see this is our detailed version. I'm going to control click this, and then as we go up, uh, we'll always have that marker in history. So now we can just do um, this new, where are we at? Project, under subtool, project. You have project history, geometry, and color. Uh, we don't have project all because there's nothing else visible in here. Now, if we have anything else visible, that'll turn project all. It'll give us the ability to do that. Uh, but since we don't, uh, we're fine. So now we can do project from history and it'll go back to this point and project. So now if I go control D, uh, project history, control D, project history, control D, project history. Uh, and again, you can do just geometry, you can do just color, uh, a combination of both. And now we can stay within the same sub tool. We don't have to duplicate it off anymore. And then now we have our projection here. So I thought that was uh, interesting. Paul showed me that. And uh, I can't remember if this is a live stream or not, but cool. Uh, how did you get rid of your 3D preview? 2020 has the top right with the grid. Oh, yeah, you know what? I did save that out. So all you need to do, and if you guys want to catch up a little bit, well, on my ArtStation page, probably a little bit easier. You can go here to the ZBrush 2020 section, and you have part one and part two of my live stream, and then this little time lapse, and then some beauty renders, I suppose. Um, so this will kind of get you caught up. I haven't I haven't sat down and done my I'm doing the uh, build video stuff, but I haven't sat down and been able to get all of my ZBrush 2020 playlist content out. But you can start there, and then I'll kind of catch you up. Like the first um, I want to say the first very several minutes of this is all about that cam view and all the intricacies there. But it's pretty easy. So you can go in here to your preferences, and you can go over here to your um, cam view, and you can just turn it on, turn it on or off. And if you turn it off, um, I always like to do a like store config and stuff, and same thing with the thumbnail. You can go there and you just turn it on and off. Uh, and 
I like to have them on. Well, the cam the cam view I don't really need. However, uh, yeah, Pablo Munoz Gomez does this, which is interesting. Is let's just do this real quick. Let's go ahead and say switch. Oh, you know what? Let's talk about this real quick. So, hold on. Let me make a note. <laughs> what I what I need to talk about. So this is going to be and. So let's say uh, I've got this character here and I want to have him in the same area. I want to pose him. So I do have this character too. If it's just a sub tool, all you have to do is go uh, load up the tool and then insert uh, or append a sub tool. And then you've got uh, this guy here. We're using him for anatomy reference. Uh, but if you wanted to bring in a whole other character, which you can do, uh, there's a couple ways you can do this too, I suppose. But we'll just, we'll stick with this. So we're going to go to load, um, load and then we're going to tool, load tool. We're going to go to recording this time because this is where I have my art station. Um, pav all, pose, pav all. Go ahead and load this character up. So it's going to be me, young me. And in here, what I can do is I can put everything I want uh, in into a folder that I want to bring over. So an easy way to do that is I can hit W. I'm going to move multiple. I'm going to hash Make sure everything is hashed. I'm going to hash, unhash this one. Uh, control tap out here to invert that. And you know what? I think there's hash out that middle part there too. So now that all of this is unhashed, I'm going to hit control F. And we're going to say yes. And we're going to say yes, all. So we're going to leave out the basketball stuff. And we're just going to put in uh, this character here. So now that we have a folder for this, let's go in here to preferences. And we're going to go down here to, not preferences, Z plugin. And we're going to go over here to Subtool Master. And in here, you're going to see there's a copy folder and a uh, paste, well, show size top subtool assign hockey keyboard. Cool. Uh, so we have a copy folder here. So we're going to say uh, copy this folder that's selected. And I mean, the folder's selected, but also within here, the subtool is selected. But uh, this folder is selected for all intents and purposes. And we're going to go back to this one here, and we're going to say paste folder. So now we don't have, I don't think I have any folders in here. Everything's just kind of loose. So we're going to go ahead and just paste our folder in there. And it'll go ahead and paste my character in there. And I cannot believe they're the exact same size. Or are they? No, I think I was going to say uh, there's, a, there's a fairly large scale discrepancy, but we can fix that real quick. So what we got to do is go over here to my folder, and we're going to say transpose set. And let's go ahead and say... Go to Unmesh Center. Uh, let's turn off X. Go to Unmesh Mesh Center. And then we'll reset that to World. And I'm going to put this right at the bottom of his feet. And before I go zoom back out too much, uh, let's go ahead and scale this up. Make sure. I want to make sure nothing's masked. Oh, oh, you know what? It looks like this is uh, just inverted, but that's not too terrible. Actually, it may not be inverted. It may just be it's so small, it's having a problem uh, drawing that correctly. So I've got that at his feet. And I'll go ahead and scale this up. You know what? I'll make, my, I'll, I'll make myself a little bit shorter. Oh, you know what? It does look like there's some stuff masked. So before I do that, Let's hold down Control Shift. Oh, I'm sorry, Alt, and tap his jersey here. Alt tap the jersey, unmask everything. There we go. Hit W. W. Sorry, these scales are kind of messed up here. Move multiple, and that saved my last selection here. And now, yeah, now we're cooking with. So I'll go ahead and scale this up. I was I was tall for a for a young teen, so we'll go ahead and say I was that tall. So we've got two characters in the scene. We've got all the folder bits in here. Every, everything in the you could save like uh, you could export as an FBX, and that'll save your names and your highest or whatever you exported version of your subtool poly paint. It'll save all that, but you're gonna lose uh, like creasing information probably, and then any of your settings that you had in here, any uh, dynamic subdivision settings you had in here, you'll lose all that. So this is a much cleaner, better way to integrate to complex files. Uh, and, and also, you know, you don't have to merge everything together to get a merged 
subtool and then bring that in and then break everything back out. So now you have uh, these two characters there. And we can go ahead and turn that off. So characters, perspective. And then of course, if you save this tool out uh, or save this project out, it'll all be one tool. If you don't need these anymore, you can just go through here and you say delete all, clear it out of your ZBrush working scene. Uh, and then you're safe to do a file save as, or what I like to do is a tool save as. I, I, I rarely do a file save as, which is a project file. Um, so yeah, that was that one. And then we talked about the cam view. Oh yeah, so the other cam view thing, and also what we can do if we don't need this character in the scene anymore, we can just go over here. Um, if we do delete folder, it's gonna delete just the folder and leave my subtools behind. If we do delete all, it's going to delete everything including the folder. Boing, and then we're back to where we started. Um, but, so for example, if we go over here to our Z pref, or I'm sorry, Z, not Z preferences, just preferences. And then we go over here to our cam view. You're gonna see it's on and then you go next, next, next. I think there, we had a skull in here, did we not? Oh, so here's a skeleton. So if you're doing anatomy stuff, uh, you can have just like anatomy reference over there. So we can actually make that a little bit bigger maybe. And now you have, as you're working, you have skeleton reference. Uh, you have skull reference. So if you're sculpting a, a skull or maybe a head and you wanna remind yourself of where those bony landmarks would be, you can use that. And yeah, we'll go ahead and change this back down to 128, et cetera, et cetera. So if you wanted to do something like that, and like I said, um, Pablo Munoz Gomez had it set up kind of like this. So we can go ahead and re recreate it. I thought it was pretty cool. So we're gonna go into, we'll just steal something off of here. So we'll grab, uh, hit your comma key, go into tool, grab the Ryan Kingsline model, anatomy model here, and we can just make our own cam view uh, with this type of information here. So we can go through, and you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna make this easier on myself. I'm gonna do a quick merge visible. And then we have a copy out here that's just merged, everything all merged together. I'm gonna hold down control shift, and we're going to slice, uh, yeah, let's we'll go ahead and slice right through here. And then control shift, and we're gonna grab those two, invert that, delete hidden, and then I'm gonna go a deformation, um, unify, uh-oh, what was that? Something sounded like it just unplugged from my computer. Everything okay? Oh, that's just a stupid hard drive. Okay, so, in fact, you know what, hold on. When it comes to new builds and stuff like that, I get a little bit antsy. So um, let's go ahead and hit F to frame this. And when I did unify, what that did is put that at the zero, zero, zero point of my scene. Uh, it looks like it's sitting on the floor. Let's do this, show you where that is. Deformation, unify. Uh, and it also makes it the size of a ZBrush primitive. That's not the important part. The important part is um, the ability to kind of put this right in the middle of my scene. So when I do my cam view, it'll go do, 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 and take and capture all of the views uh, like it needs to. Because if it's way up here uh, in space, I might have a hard time. And if you're ever wondering, if you really want to see where your floor is, go in here to draw and change this elevation to zero. And that'll go ahead and put that elevation right where the world center is. Uh, but in our case, we'll go ahead and leave that at negative one. That'll put it at the lowest subtool. So if you ever want to go in here and do like a BPR render, it'll put the shadow on the floor. So there's that. So anyway, let's go ahead and turn that off here. So really quickly, if we want to make this a little bit easier to look at, let's go in here to our color and we're going to go ahead and control shift, click these subtools here. And we can say, let's go ahead and fill, uh, color fill object, uh, RGB turned on. Yeah, that should work. And then over here on the bone, we'll go ahead and select this one and we'll give this like maybe a little bit of a bonish color. There we go. Uh, also, let's go ahead and change the startup to a material to a basic material. Uh, it just gives us a little bit more leeway as far as um, the ability to change some of these material settings. So, and not that you can't change matte cap settings, but you know. And also what we're gonna do, we'll go in here to render shadows. What I'm trying to do is get rid of these pure blacks because that's gonna make it transparent when you make a cam view. So uh, preferences, no, render, shadow. Uh, you can turn down the global strength, but that's just gonna be whenever you render it out. So when we did that BPR render previously, you're gonna see that strength isn't quite so dark. Uh, what we're really looking for here is our preview shadows. Uh, turn off deep shadow and then uh, that should be fine. And then you can go in here to your 
modifiers. We can crank up the diffuse so we can see it a little bit better. Um, specular we can also turn up maybe a little bit. And then you can you can make it look wetter or you can make it look a little bit drier. So whatever is easier uh, for your eyeballs. And in fact, speaking of eyeballs, let me go through here. Let's go ahead and isolate this and let's do a quick uh, auto groups. And I'm just going to do a quick mirror and weld. And then we're going to go hold down control shift and then you can go through here. You can do a little bit of a cleanup pass if you don't need like uh, tissue depth markers on there. Uh, let's see if we can do this here. Here it's control shift tapping. Uh, and now that these are all their own separate poly groups, we can just go through and just grab these real quick. If you grab too much stuff, you can always, I'll show you how to fix that real quick. So go through, grab any of these markers you may want to get rid of, and then control shift drag to invert that and then put these back on because you want to keep those. Control shift drag again, geometry modified topology, delete hidden, and then there you go. And then now, uh, since these are separated out, we can even maybe make these white. There we go, that's pretty good. So, uh, change all the material settings however you'd like, and then let's go ahead and crank up that ambient a little bit too, just to make sure it's nice and bright. And then now what we need to do, turn off perspective, and turn off your floor unless you want to capture that as your cam view, and also go in here to document, uh, click on back, and then just drag over this little black swatch there, and then now we have a perfectly dark, and now if we go in here, so we have perfectly black around our cam view here, and finally, if we go into um, preferences, cam view, make cam view. There we go. So now you have a little anatomy model over there. Ta da! And uh, if you want to save this, let's go ahead and take this texture. I'm going to go ahead and export it. And then we'll go ahead and go into ZBrush 2020 Z Startup Cam View. And then you can just put it in here. You can you can save over the default if you want to save over that. Uh, but we can go ahead and call this <clears throat> anatomy muscle head. So now when you go in here and you click next, it'll show up in your uh, cam views as anatomy muscle head. Ta-da! There you go. And then we go ahead and make that size. Uh, if you want to see more information on like putting those blue markers up here, so you can go through and click your side views and stuff, and you can put those anywhere because it's really controlled by pure blue pure red, pure green, and they will control that behavior. You can actually do it in Photoshop if you want. This is just a PSD file, so you can go to Photoshop and you can add it, uh, or you can capture it on your document and have your camera spin around. But it was in those videos I sent out earlier in my ArtStation page for ZBrush 2020 right there. Um, oh, maybe back up here. If I miss something, just holler back out at me. Uh, any chance you could put the upper body into the Discord up the stream? I'd love to use it for reference, actually. Sure. Uh, are you talking about Bebop's upper body or just that, that anatomy model? If you want that anatomy model, I can just give that to everybody. Uh, let me see. Nalino. Yeah. So this guy here. Uh, oh, man. I really like that anatomy head. That makes me look like pro. Uh, so we're going to go over here, and we're going to change my document background again. Let's go ahead and say... Maybe a bit darker gray here. And here you can see where you have that transparency out there. I am going to make this a little bit smaller because it's a little bit intrusive. We'll go ahead and leave that on. That's neat. So, um, yeah. So if you're talking about this upper body here, I can, I can save that out if you want that. It's no big deal. Um, but also, if you want access to... There we go. Uh, if you want access to this guy, I can send out a link for him. Give me a second. Uh, where's he at? Here. Yeah, oop, sorry, changed passwords yesterday. Uh, yes. And then... <laughs> so I have this guy. So here's a, here's a link to these base bodies. So there's that guy. And also there's, oh boy, do I have these somewhere? Give me a second. Uh, sorry, again, new computer, things moved around a little bit. Uh, I don't have all my favorites saved like I normally do. So I'm gonna have to kinda, actually I'm gonna move this down. Okay, um, um, ooh, no, that's the wrong one but that's good to know because I can delete that folder. 
Um, oh, wow. Is that on my old C drive? Uh, well, that's good to know. Okay, think, think, think. C, users. Oh, I can't access it. Oh, sorry. I mean, you we have the files there, so it's no big deal. But you have basically have a male and a female base body in there. You can you can use if you'd like. Um, let's see here. Going back up to the top. Uh, how does topology behave when projecting without geometry turned on? Um, I don't think it'll. It just won't move. So uh, it may the ray distance. That's a good point. So if we do it, we can do a test. So we have this turned off. Uh, you may have some issues if we had, let's see, does this guy, this guy wouldn't have UVs because I just did that. But you know what, let's do this. Let's go ahead and say delete all. And let's load up our turtle power. Evop, lockout, solo mode. And let's go ahead and turn off polypane again. So let me just check this real quick. So we're going to go down here to our UV map. Yeah, we don't have uh, morph UV on that one because we don't have UVs. Uh, we could UV him really quickly, I suppose. Um, but uh, yeah, so if we had if we had history and we wanted to project color, basically, depending on how far away your Ziri mesh is from the colored high-res version, um, the geometry wouldn't move, but it would project uh, the color. I suppose what I would use that for mostly is like if I, you know what I would use it for? Ah, this will be good. Okay, so does this one have UVs? And if not, no big deal, we can make them. So texture map, UV map, we do. So if I go into solo mode here and do a morph UV, uh, mesh has layers. Really? What layers are on here? Turn that off. That's weird. Uh, yeah, let's delete that layer. Don't need it. Okay. So we'll go ahead and say morph UV. There you go. So here's our UVs on here. And of course, uh, just like in the ZBrush 2020 demos, you can go through here, you can sculpt on here. So it's a little bit easier, like especially if you need to like get up into armpits or you just want to do a straight line. Uh, it's a lot easier to go through here now and do straight lines and sculpt. And then also uh, paint in here. So if we wanted to do, let's go in here to texture import. Oh no. Oh, I hate myself. Hold on. <laughs> I'm doing it live. Let's see if we can go in here to my... One thing I didn't copy down. I'll get there, guys. Give me a sec. Uh, transfer. Um, what was it called? It was called Zero 2020 Demo. Yes. Download it. On my local area network. Show and folder. Thank you. Let's throw this right on our desktop. 7-zip. Sure. Do, 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 do. New CPU. Oh, I should have done a performance thing. Performance. Oh, it's already done. So let's go into that folder here. Desktop here. I think it's uh, actually Restream is covering that up. There you go. So we have a demo folder. Yay. Okay, so we're going to go to our... Let me close all this up. Nothing you guys need to see. So we were doing texture import desktop um, demo. And then in here, we have some fabric patterns here. So let's go ahead and make them a little bit lumberjack-ish. Then we'll go to texture, go ahead and select that. And we'll go ahead and we'll scale this down a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and hold down shift and then do our tile uh, U and V, and of course you can make this as small as you need to to make it make sense on the scale that you're painting at. And then we can go through here. And then we'll do uh, RGB. Yeah, RGB is all we need, 100%. And then we'll go through here and we will paint that on there. Turn that off. And wait a minute, hold on. Do we have geometry? Oh, we're in the highest resolution here. Let's see. Did that do something weird when I scaled it too much? Oh. Looks like that scale does something weird. Let's try that again. There was one little click in there that was a little bit bizarre. 
Huh, okay. And then, of course, now we can go down here and we can unmorph our UVs. And we have this. Now, let's see, how many? That should be plenty. Let me see, hold on. Texture off. That wasn't, that wouldn't do it, would it? Yeah, maybe it would. Layers aren't doing anything weird. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Or maybe I just tiled it too much. Oh, you know what? Let's look at this. Let's turn uh, Z and then we'll take that opacity down so I can see it a little bit better. There we go. Okay. Uh, we have our lumberjack print on here. So, what was I doing? Oh, yeah. So, we were going to talk about uh, where you might use uh, project color only and not want to do project. Uh, all geometry and then uh, it doesn't really answer your question as far as like what the behavior is going to be is that really just going to be like on a low res to a high res uh, as long as the the verts don't change that much it's I think it'll project fine just the color um, and if you get like we were talking about here so if you go in here to project uh, underneath projecting to have cut geometry and color so we turn off geometry and we just want to project color from our history um, we can project history with just color so in for instance we have this now Let's say, uh, so what, what, we us what I usually do is when I have a Marvelous Designer, I'll bring it in single-sided. Um, so this outside here will be my, this is, this is where I can see this being useful. Uh, this outside layer here would be my Marvelous Designer and be single-sided and then I go through and create thickness and then project just this top layer here. So in the same, in the same way you could do, um, you can project just color and then, uh, you could have a little bit more control over like coloring the inside and then projecting just the outside. Um, and then you can isolate that with polygroups here, which we, we do have here. So for instance, long story short, so let's try this. So let's say, you know what, I want to uh, go through and color this, but you know what, I want that on the inside and on the outside, I want to do a, let's see if this will even work. Let's do, um, I'm not even positive it will, but we'll go down here to again, um, UVs, and we'll go ahead and morph UV. So this is again just in our history. We'll go into solo mode here. Let's go to texture, import, and we'll grab something very different. Let's grab uh, this one. And again, we'll just tile this a little bit here. So we have our inside here, and then these are our outside bits. So we're going to go through here, and we'll go ahead and just color just our outside bits. And we get more for UV, and now we have different outside and inside. And this, in this case, we don't need to project at all. Uh, however, we can, if you needed to, just for testing purposes, we can go through here and say, you know, I'm going to color everything. And now we have all of this, but in our history, we have this version here. So we could control tap this one and then bring it back here, isolate just these outside pieces here. And now let's see if this will work. Let's see if we go up here to project history, just color. There we go. And then bring everything back. Yeah, that works just fine. So that would be an instance of just projecting history and color. And if you didn't want to mess up um, your sculpt or I guess, if you had a had an instance where this was just, if you actually went through and deleted that, uh, and you just had a single-sided mesh, or you had less geometry, and you didn't want to project the geometry because maybe some geometry disappeared or you got rid of some, uh, and you did just want to project just the color, um, that would keep it so that it wouldn't even try to project the geometry. Because if you try to project the geometry, uh, in some instances, it's going to want to like skew or like shoot little verts, uh, little vertex points to go to places where it's not at. I don't know. Anyway, that was kind of weird. Sorry about that, but uh, let's see. Oh yeah, and I need to talk from my diaphragm so that I get rid of some of my vocal fry because usually when I get lazy talking is when it starts going like this and it sounds a lot like that. A little bit hard to listen to. 
Uh, I tend to work in low sub D. When I export, I have to go through each layer and hit apply dynamic sub D before exporting FBX. Is there a better way to export a high res from a low res model? Uh, if you just have, if it's just a matter of uh, applying your dynamic, which uh, you do need to do to export, because dynamic is just a preview. So an easier way to do that that I like to use is under see plugins. You have to download this, but you can go into Clean Tool Master and you can hit Dynamic Subdiv to Subdiv DS All, and that'll turn on Dynamic Subdiv for all of your subtools at once. It'll just go through your subtools and go do 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 and uh, apply them. Of course, I like to have a saved file with my Dynamic Subdivisions not applied uh, because that's less destructive. But if you're ready to export your dynamic subdivisions. Uh, same thing with your BPR to Geo. If you want to go through and have all of your nano meshes or your array meshes turn into real geometry, um, BPR to Geo all, BG all will do that for you as well. Yes. Uh, yeah, and if you want, you guys got it. But uh, if you want to, like, pixel logic download, just Google that. Download center. And we're going to go to ZBrush plugins and then that the one I just used. So all these ones at the top are already pre-installed. All these ones down here, uh, man, there's a lot of really cool ones, but here's the one I was using. So download this and you know what? We can just do this. Let's do a search for plugin on my YouTube channel. Installing plugins. Look at that. Copy link address and you can just go through that and install all the plugins you want. Um, hmm. Sorry, let me get caught up. Dynamesh, same, uh, yeah. Cool. Oh, that's another thing too. Is you can use uh, the Clean Tool Master. You can also do your own. You can go down here to Z Repeat It, another plugin you can install, and you can just record yourself turning off or uh, applying dynamic. Where'd that be? Dynamic Subdiv Apply. Hit that button. Record it. Name it Dynamic Apply, and then you can tell it. You go through here. You grab Dynamic Apply out of here, and then you can say Apply it to my selected, visible, or all subtools. Uh, what motherboard are you using with that new Threadripper? So that one <clears throat> is the AMD, uh, well it's not AMD, uh, Republic of Gaming Zenith 2 Extreme TRX40 Socket STRX4. This one here. Make sure I can see that here. This thing. Uh, this is the motherboard. Uh, and this is really cool too. Oh good, there's a picture on here. I'm going to need to use that for my build video. Uh, so this has a ton of uh, super speed ports and then there's also an SS20 uh, type C and then there's a bunch of SS10s. And then also, what, was, what else is cool about this? Oh, the M.2, the, the uh, NVMA, where are those at? Memory. Yeah, 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 it can go up to 256 gig. Of course, if you can fit them in there with your cooling solutions, which I cannot at this at the moment. Um, eight serial ATA ports, two, two, three. I think there's one DIMM X2 module support. So there's five, you can do, um, so the hard drive on this thing, you can do your old school, old, so, so last year, um, where you have your, NVMA, where's my box for that? Because we can talk about that a little bit, because that's actually really cool. That's probably my favorite thing. Um, nope, that's a cooling kit. Uh, well, I don't have it anymore. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so I can't give you the exact specs on the hard drives that I'm using. Oh, I guess I can look it up. Uh, but basically, on my C drive here, let me see if I can just do properties. Mm-hmm. I don't really don't want to go into um, force MP600 uh, hard drive here. So this is the uh, NVMA uh, M.2. So basically, on the hard on the motherboard, there's a place where uh, there's like there's five different places where you can plug in these little they look like little chips, and instead of like a big hard drive where you run a serial SATA cable and a power, uh, you just take this little chip and you plug it in the into the hard drive or into the motherboard and very small very cool they do, the one i have has a corsair has a little heat sink on the back but on the motherboard you can actually pop off a little plate you can plug in two hard drives and then it has um what is that stuff it kind of has a, like a thermal paste 
on the back of the um, heat spreader so you can plug that back in and then it'll sit on top of the hard drives and take the heat and uh, dissipate it I suppose. And then on the back of the motherboard there's another slot to put one in and then there's another thing where you can have this, it comes with this metal thing, you can unscrew it and you can put in two, uh, two little hard drives in there and they can plug that right into the motherboard. So there's like, I think there's five, um, I want to say they're M.2 drives. I wish I could find the box. SSD. Yeah, M.2 SSD. And those are those are super fast. And and the biggest thing for me is like there's you don't need cables. You just plug them right in. I guess my laptop has those as well. I suppose. Uh, but it's cool having it on this thing. Cool. Um, yeah, as you repeat it, and then the. Uh, clean tool master. This has a lot of cool stuff in it, by the way. Uh, decrease Z tool file size, texture cleaning, subtool cleaning, and then just applying those. Cool. Where do I save the image in order to save my cam view preset? So basically, if we go in here to like the texture that we captured, and then we say export, this will be in your. Let me move this over just a little bit. ZBrush 2020. Z startup cam view, and then this is all of your cam view. So if you don't like scrolling through a next, 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 if there's something in here you're never going to use, uh, just go ahead and delete them. You can delete over, you can save over the default, um, or you can save it just as a separate one here, like we did uh, Anatomy Muscle Head. We threw that in there. And then again, this is just a PSD, so if you want to modify those in any way, just go into Photoshop. In fact, we can talk about that a little bit. I think we, I might have did that on the live stream, I don't really remember. And you talk about hollowing models, poly paint calculation with the new analysis tool and preferences. Yeah. And we did a little bit on that second, uh, on this one here. We talked a little bit about uh, that analysis tool, but I think we can do probably a better job if I did it again. We can talk about that. But anyway, we'll go into um, really quickly, we'll go into that cam view. Z startup, cam view. Enemy muscle head here. Uh, so here, if we wanted to divide this up, oh boy, where was that at? That was under um, think, think, think. View rulers. We want to do a new guide. No, new guide layout. And we want to say uh, no gutter deleted and we want to do eight across and one two three four five down zero and then there you go now you have guides that'll go through and you have this thing basically divided up perfectly into each little image uh, so at least you know like where to put if you want it again if you wanted to capture the rgb you could do that just as a something saved on your document and then your head will spin around it but sometimes the head will cover up your arrows. Uh, so in this case, you could actually just create, um, let's see, and it, this is where you need to be very careful uh, with your, so here's red, you want to make sure it's 255, 00, and then so it's pure red. So we can go through here and we can go, let's turn on this and go, let's do this. And I make it really obvious because now I can go over my subtool as much as I want. So we got red, and then green, again, 255, zero, zero. Uh, honestly, I don't really remember. Crap. Let's look at one of these real quick. Okay, so red to the left, green down, blue straight at me. Green down. And then blue. Straight at me. So now we have this, we'll hit uh, control, uh, oops, that, damn, I had to re-educate myself, hold on, uh, I used to have a edit, keyboard shortcuts, layer, duplicate, oh I don't have that, yeah fine, okay, go ahead and duplicate this layer and we'll move it over. And then we'll go ahead and say, um, I wonder if we can just go ahead and, so we can merge that down. Uh, 
And you probably, in order to make it so that um, this thing doesn't jump around, I don't think it'll be that obvious, but uh, you can go through and you can have it move over an, an exact amount, but I'm not too worried about that right now. And then we'll go ahead and merge this down here. And we'll go ahead and put that there, and then we'll just go ahead and get rid of those extra ones here. All right, so we're just down. We'll go ahead and save it. Get rid of this one here. So now let's see if it picked it up in ZBrush. So we'll go through here. So we've got our cam view, preferences. Uh, let's see here. Yoink. Does it pick it up? Yay! So now, uh, as I'm going through, you're going to see we have the arrows on there, and then um, we can go through and we can click those arrows, and I'll have that behavior. Um, cool. I uh, didn't see if you talked about it, the Consumer Threader Burst 64 core. I saw them uh, teasing it on one of their, <laughs> they had a funny video about where they had like a dating game it was called like what what um, what CPU is best for you or something. And at the very end of that, I saw them teasing it. Um, but yeah, this one in particular is just um, 32 core, 60 64 threads, the 3970x. Much better though. Like the the memory handling does again. It doesn't have those NUMA nodes, and uh, I have direct access, and the core speeds, the clock speeds are higher and stuff like that. So I have noticed a, a difference on that. It was interesting, especially with the new hard drives and stuff, and the new motherboard with the PCIe 4. Um, also, I have a, a 2080 Ti in this machine, uh, but that's PCIe 3, so it's not really taking advantage of the new PCIe 4 motherboard specs, but, you know, you can't win them all. Uh, Joseph Strode in the sheet, uh, the hall isn't an so but I didn't understand it well. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit, because honestly, I don't do a lot of that stuff. I'm going to go ahead and turn that cam view on now that I've messed it up. So, let's think. That's how, uh, you know what I like to do. Uh, if I want to keep these subtools around, which I generally like to do, I'm going to do load tool from project, and instead of going into my light box, I'm going to go in here to Z projects, and we're going to grab like the uh, demo anime head, and I can just load in a tool. And then, because when you go into a project, it'll sometimes blow away everything and all your tools and your settings and stuff will inherit that Z project. So that's a way to kind of get a tool from a project. And uh, one thing I did didn't really work that well. One thing you can do is you can go through here and you can use this Dynamesh um, shell, create shell. So for example, if we go through here and we just grab a cylinder here and we hold down Alt. Let me pop a cylinder in here, and just temporarily, I'm going to turn on um, display double. Yeah, let's go ahead and scale this up a little bit here. So now this is a subtractive uh, mesh here, as you can see. So control drag, uh, Dynamesh is on. So if you do create shell, um, it'll go through and it'll create a shell for you. And then now. Um, you can do like a draft analysis on this, and that just gives you a shell thickness of four. Um, you can try doing like control shift, and then control shift drag to invert that, control W to make this all one poly group. And then with this one selected, you can go through here and try to do maybe like a, let's do a polish by feature, open circle, and just kind of smooth that out a little bit. So now uh, we have thickness on here, and if you don't believe me, we can go in here to append, and we can say grab a cube, turn on subtractive, turn on live boolean, I go out of solo mode, hit W, Reset that widget here, and that was weird. Okay, um, still covering it. Oh, we have move, move multiple on still. Oh, turn move multiple off. There we go. So there we go. There's our cross section view uh, of this model. So there's a couple different things we can do. Actually, I kind of like that, but we'll go ahead and turn that off for now. So we have our head here. And we want to do an analysis. So we're, there's a couple different way, areas we can do analysis. It's been a while since I've done this, so bear with me. Um, there's the poly paint 
underneath uh, geometry, polypaint here. Um, you can do analysis from draft. So from draft is like if you wanted to, let's draw perspective, if you wanted to like pull this out of a two-part mold, you can go through here and you can say um, set, our, set our direction, do polypaint from draft. And now you can see uh, right along this midline is where you'd probably want to put the seam for that mold. And then uh, over here, you can see you're gonna have a problem. So this is basically, uh, as this goes out uh, and you try to pull this through, it's gonna have a little bit of an issue here. So what you can do is go into clay brush here and also be careful with this. So it's going to brush auto masking. We're gonna turn on back face mask. And then now we can go through here. Oops, let's turn off RGB. Then we can go through here and we can kind of fix this area here. So you can go through here, you can smooth it and you can hold down shift and turn off RGB for your smooth if you don't wanna mess that up and then we'll do another um, from draft analysis and now you can see we're cleaning up uh, these areas here you might be saying is this how different is this from polypaint uh, or grouping from front and interestingly there we go so now this will pop out of the mold easier uh, however um, you can also go into and you can do that on um, just angled things too so if you have something that just goes straight straight in and then you want to angle it so it pops out of the mold faster as opposed to um, having a little bit of a hard time popping straight out of a mold. Actually the more I talk about this the more I realize I want to do if you guys haven't watched it yet it's really interesting. Uh, the Hasbro Toys at ZBrush Summit um, was really cool so check that out. He, he talks about a lot more cool stuff than I'm going to be able to. Um, but so we have that draft analysis and then also there is a polygroup here and they're putting underneath polygroups here. Um, you can do a polygroup from polyplane once once you've done that and then you can have a polygroup uh, down here and then you can also do there is this group front so if you turn on polyframe here it'll kind of do the same thing um, so that's kind of interesting as long as you have your camera set where you want. Um, now that was draft, and I think there's actually mask, now that I think about it, masking, yeah, mask by draft. So if we hit control W, and then uh, we've already set the draft direction and angle, so then you just do a mask by draft, and it'll just go ahead and mask, um, like so. So there's that, and then we were gonna be talking about uh, this other one. So underneath, there's a, underneath transform, there is a uh, draw draft analysis that's real time. So you can go and turn that on. And let's go ahead and say, yeah, you can turn your polypaint off. And so now this one you can see um, is real time. So if we go through here and we kind of start, damn standard Z sub, unmask everything. There we go. So now you can see as we're sculpting, it's updating in real time. It's not as precise, maybe as the polypaint version, uh, but now you have a little bit of a real time feedback here. So instead of hitting you know, re redraw, uh, redo the analysis, redo the analysis. It'll go through and it'll just update on the fly. So now, you, as you're sculpting, um, you're going to see, oh, you're going to have a little problem here. So now you want to go through and maybe smooth that out. And then uh, once you do that, uh, you it may be worthwhile to go through and then do a, a polypaint one to give you a little bit more accuracy, just as like a final cleanup. Um, so that was draft analysis, set direction and angle, that's real time, we had the polypaint version, and then as far as thickness analysis, I think that's only under polypaint, from thickness. So, again, we have thickness in here, and we're going to go ahead and turn off draft analysis. So we're going to say uh, polypaint from thickness, and it's going to turn everything red. Uh, so we have min thickness and max thickness, uh, 1 and 5, and uh, there's really... So over here, if we hit W and then Y, we have our transpose line. So if I go from the bottom of the neck to the top of the head, for instance here, uh, you're gonna see a, he is two units tall, which uh, anything you bring into any program is gonna be based on the unit scale that they had. ZBrush by default to set up the millimeters. So if you go into Z plug in here, scale master is where you're gonna wanna play around with this stuff. So for instance, um, do I have it? Yeah, Scale Master. It should load. This one you shouldn't have to download and install. It should be in there by default. So here we can go through here and we can set our uh, scene scale. So uh, this two millimeters is a little bit small for a head. So let's say, you know what? Um, probably it's a little bit closer to. Um, let's say we're working at. Or, or you can change it to whatever you want. So let's say we're working at inches. Um, so for instance, this is closer to like maybe two inches tall. So we'll go ahead and select that. So two inches tall, 
uh, would be pretty a decent scale for like a small model. Um, so we can go through that, set scene scale, and then um, and also if we wanted to scale it up, so now our Y is 1.99, so it's like, you know what, it's not really two inches tall, it's actually gonna be um, three inches tall. So we'll change uh, Y to three, and then we'll say resize subtool. There we go. So now we've set our scene scale to inches, and then now if I go drag to the top to the bottom here, you're gonna see this thing is now uh, three inches tall. So one inch, two inch, three inch, and our unit scale is set to inches. So we have one, two, so three inches, and then uh, half inch, and then quarter inches here. So now we're in America, uh, United States units, I should say, and I think maybe one other country. <laughs> uh, so we're out of that. We're out of metric world, but that's okay, just for demonstration purposes. So we got our three inch tall head here, and then now we can have a little bit more control of our draft analysis. So when we go through here, and it's like, okay, how thick? is this. So if we go through here and we click and drag, um, you can see it's going to stick to those points and over here you can see it's 0.1 uh, inches. So let's say we have a tolerance of the minimum we want it to go is 0.1 and then the maximum I guess is maybe like let's just say 1. So we'll go from thickness again and so now you can see uh, if we go into our, where is that at? I want to say preferences. Again I don't do this often but uh, to the best of my abilities, I'm going to try to walk you through something I never do. Uh, let's go into hmm, analysis. Where was that at? Hold on, I got notes on this. Let's see, Cambium okay, Polyfade, Extractor Brush. You guys know all that stuff already. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Remesher, hatch brush, hatch brushes I didn't talk about at all, so we could we could talk about that, the back and forth, infinite depth, uh, got some interesting features on that one. Oh yeah, poly paint for thickness. Um, Min, max. Yeah, Z plugin, where is it? I have pictures of it. <laughs> Z plugin scale master preferences analysis goodness preferences analysis did they move it or am I just there it is God okay sorry I'm blind so in here this red one uh, means it's less than our min thickness which is 0.1 inches um, so that means anywhere where you have it red right in through here uh, it's gonna have a little bit of a problem in fact you know what let's let's make this a little more interesting and let's say uh, let's say 0.2 uh, or, you know, let's say 0.25, or you know what, let's get crazy. Let's say, you know what, our min thickness is going to be, what did I say that was? Our min thickness is 1, and our max thickness will be, let's say, 2, I suppose. Okay, so, in this, this instance, you can see uh, right through here, right around this ring, right in this forehead here, uh, and if we go, let's go turn back on our, oh, we have light boolean turned on already. And we just need to turn this on. So right through here, you can see, oh, it's getting a little bit thin in there. So it's seeing this distance through here a little bit thinner than you, than you want. Even this little area in here, this area on this head, too thin. So if we go ahead and turn that off, just to give you that visual representation, or we can turn that on, and uh, we can kind of, we can actually sculpt while that's on. So we can go through here again, our clay brush here, um, brush, auto masking, back face masking. So now we can go through here and we can like sculpt this in and sculpt this out a little bit, maybe smooth it a little. And then now when we rerun from thickness, there we go, better. Um, so wherever it's a little bit thin, and again, that min thickness is set to one, although min thickness set to one, makes me think that's going to be one inch, but these are much, much less than one inch. Think, think, think. Hmm. I'll have to think about that. Anyway, uh, so you can set your min thickness and then you can update it on the fly. Well, not on the fly, you have to go through and rerun the analysis, but you can control that. And then one, else, one other thing was I going to talk about. Oh yeah, so basically in here, this the red area means it's less than your min thickness, the pink one, that's not bad, that just means it's right at your min thickness, and then any of these is min thickness plus 
and then all the way to E, which is just over your min thickness. So right here where it gets really thick, I suppose. So I don't know. Does that explain it any better? Cool. Uh, 3080. <laughs> See how that goes. Maybe maybe that'll be maybe that'll take advantage of my PCI four. Um, where can I get that anatomy model? This anatomy model here. This one, yeah, you can just hit the comma key and then load in uh, that anatomy model. So basically your comma key brings up your light box and closes your light box. Uh, or you might have a light box button up here. I usually get rid of that. And then just this model right here, just load it up. Cool. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, let's clean this up. So let's say delete all, head, delete all, this, turn off poly paint here. Um, I guess I can go ahead and load up. I'm gonna go ahead and load up Quadro here. More. Cool, and let me load up some reference here. Let me drag this out. Man, I am just having, there we go. The hardest time, add image. And let's go to streaming. Oh, another thing we can we can make Baxter. That might be fun to make. And I'm just gonna grab this real quick, just this basic reference here. This guy right here. We got ref two. Okay. So yeah, I think we've got him pretty much modeled out. Um, there's some grenades and some straps on his body and then his pants we could probably detail out a little bit better than this. So we do have, uh, these were pants, uh, oh man, they were in Marvel's Designer, I shouldn't have uh, saved the pants over, you know what, let's load this up. Load tool, and I, I was doing a, a demo and I went ahead and did some stuff to it. Uh, let's see, turtle power, bebop, details, date modified. Let's grab pants types. Go ahead and load this up. So here's all of our different pants types. So here we see um, cotton heavy canvas, cotton twill, denim raw, leather cowhide, and leather lambskin. I'm trying to remember which one I went with. Cowhide, it looks like. So leather cowhide. There we go. So what we can do is, I think this might actually be easier to do than to fix everything. So I'm gonna take this leather cowhide here and we're gonna to go to insert. And we're gonna insert this other leather cowhide and this, these, all these different pants I don't really need so we're gonna say delete all. And then this one, we've got that just sitting behind. So I'm not gonna do a history, although you could actually, now that I think about it. So uh, it's not, I guess it's not any different than going to like B, Z, P for your Z project brush, but if you wanted to do the history recall brush, you can go to B H R and turn on history recall. And if you set your history subtool to this one here by control clicking it, and then go back to your pants here, uh, you can just use the history recall brush B H R uh, to go through here and just recall that history. Uh, from those pants. Uh, of course, like I said, it's going to behave very, very similarly to Z projects. You can see it's projecting based on your camera, and you probably don't want to have X symmetry turned on. Um, I'm trying to think if I could unwrap. No, I couldn't. So it'd actually be a lot easier. I did this as a demo to show off uh, Morph UV, and then now I'm kind of stuck here with all this uh, information that I don't want. Uh, another thing you can do, instead of doing the history recall brush, so if we go through here, we take this leather cowhide and we control tap this one. You can just, uh, you can literally just do uh, Z project brush. So B, Z, P, and then we can go through here and we can Z project this RGB off Z sub up to 100, I suppose, light Boolean off. So now here, here, is it going to work? Z project brush, turn off solo mode. These ones you can't have uh, solo mode turned on. So we'll go ahead and we can Z project down. And then now here's the difference. So if you Z project down here and then you um, you can hold down Alt and you can Z project up. However, if we go down here and we control tap this and then we use our 
BHR, History Recall Brush, you don't have to go down and up. It does both of them for you. So you can go through here. I guess it's maybe a little bit easier. So we'll go ahead and turn that Z intensity up a little bit. And we're just going to really quickly fix, quote unquote, this mess that I made. Oops. Let's be very careful around here. So it looks like I moved these bits around a bit. And then work our way around here. Now this would be a lot easier if I could do my Morph UV, uh, but in order for that Morph UV to work nicely with uh, my other mesh, I would have to go through and UV that exactly, and that's not going to happen. So we'll go ahead and just, just work our way around here. Kind of a silly mistake to make. I should have. This is what happens when you grab things to demo and then you save them and then you forget that like, oh wait, I, I really didn't want to save those changes. But here you can see, instead of having to hold down Alt and let go of Alt, also let's change that focal shift up a little bit so we get a little bit of a softer fall off. It also looks like I changed the position just a little bit from the original, like we moved it around, so it's not doing a, the world's greatest job, but you know what, I can live with it. So this is the most exciting live stream I've ever done, I think. So I'm going to solo here. There we go. A little bit cleaned up. Oh, let's grab these two. Okay. So now we can go through here and smooth stronger. Let's crank that back up. And we'll go through and ease that out a little bit. Uh, another thing we can do is we can drop our Z intensity or our geometry down one. Uh, just to make it a little bit easier to smooth out. And then we can raise it back up. Because now that we have subdivision history, that's at least an option for us, which is nice. Go through here, let's smooth out that mistake we made. Oops. Be careful around there. And then we'll do another pass at the higher resolution. we go and then back up to five and then just clean up a little bit of that residual mess. Okay, so that's a little bit unnecessary but at least it didn't cost us too much. And right along here looks like there's an unfortunate uh, oops. Artifact. So we can go through here with our trim brush maybe and we'll just knock that line down just a bit. And then smooth. There we go. Good enough. Shift. Bring everything else back. Turn off solo mode. And go ahead and take this body out. And then we have, let's see, this is the one that is just a reference. We don't need that anymore. Delete it. There we go. Back to where we started. And let's do a quick save. 15. In good shape. <gasps> uh, for a beginner ZBrush, should I invest in KeyShot for ZBrush and KeyShot Bridge or wait a bit until I get better? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I think, I mean, honestly, if you don't have anything... <laughs> Not to be mean, uh, but I'm just, you know, you're just starting out in ZBrush. You're just trying to, you know, get some stuff done. Um, so if you don't, I mean, ZBrush is easy though. So I, I don't want to say like, well, until you have something worth rendering, uh, maybe hold off a bit uh, and see if it's even worth it. And there's also a lot of rendering you can get done in ZBrush itself. Uh, if you go here, let's see if I have some stuff here. Um, ZBrush guide, ZBrush rendering. Oh yeah, so we have. The ZBrush image-based lighting. So I go through here, let's say copy. You can you can check this one out. And so this will give you a bunch of rendering options for just doing like HDR image lighting for your ZBrush models. Um, what else we got? Um, what else can we use? So that's, that would be ZBrush. There's also like stylized rendering. Um, some of that stuff is under this, this is ZBrush 2019, what's new? So if you look at this playlist here, uh, this will give you a bunch of uh, stylized rendering techniques. 
You can also, uh, but if you, I mean, it is kind of nice to be able to throw things in the uh, key shot very quickly uh, and get really nice renders, you know, especially if you're doing like product style rendering. Uh, it can really come in handy for like very precise um, plastics and glass and stuff like that very quickly. Man, I thought I fixed all this. Let's turn off. Hold on, solo mode. RGB off. Let's move this out of the way. Um, let's grab this one. So I guess we don't need X turned on for that. Why? There we go. A little better. Control Shift A, mask on mask, and again we can just. Control Shift A, mask on mask W. There we go. Sorry about that. That was bugging me. Um. Yes. Uh, but yeah, uh, I don't know. I guess I would wait, but uh, it's also really fun to play with. So if you got the cache and you know you're going to end up using it for beauty renders and stuff later, and really, I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can render your stuff. Um, it's really more of a speed thing. The ability to go ZBrush, click, I'm in KeyShot, drag and drop, save, render, done. Um, you know, saves you quite a bit of time depending on what you're working on. So, you know, that can be a good investment. It is 7.14 a.m. my time. Cool. Uh, what CAD software am I using? Uh, that one, if you want more information on that, uh, I usually use Fusion 360 uh, for my most of my CAD needs. Uh, in fact, I have a Fusion 360 Quick Start right here. Um, you can check that out. It's still relevant. I mean, it's a little bit older, but all the, all the stuff I talk about is still usable. Um, and it even talks about going from ZBrush and making like a 3D quick proxy because in CAD modeling sometimes um, it can be sometimes a little different, difficult to figure out like very complex shapes where in ZBrush if you're a little bit more loose so here, make PolyMesh 3D um, what are we looking for here? yeah, let's go ahead and DynaMesh this thing and then hold down Control Shift so in here um, you can very quickly just kind of make um, kind of complex uh, shapes here Whereas in CAD modeling, you know, you got to make a sketch and you got to, you know, extrude and you got to get everything perfect. Uh, whereas in ZBrush, you can kind of be like, hey, you know what, let me just play around with the shape and make it fit uh, what I'm trying to get at the fit. And then you could even do like Booleans in here. And then if you wanted to rebuild it, you could take this like proxy mesh uh, into Fusion 360 if you wanted and um, just rebuild it. Of course, in here, it might actually be better to use Boolean so you can get rid of some of these artifacts here. Um, and these artifacts aren't impossible to deal with. It just kind of, depending on how fast you want to go and how sloppy you want to be. Um, so stuff like this, and then let's go through here. And so this is another, this is an instance where if you put a little bit of a, an angle in here, it'll be easier to remove from a mold. So when you do your draft analysis, uh, let's do real time. So again, transform. Draft analysis, set direction. Uh, so if you go through here, you see this is fine. However, if we were to say go through here and maybe try a clip rectangle and hold down Alt. So it goes straight back. Um, and then we do look at that analysis. You can see uh, we're getting a little bit iffy uh, on these corners here, but previously uh, this is fine. This angle is good. So something to consider. Uh, so yeah, there's that, and uh, so like again, this isn't this is like a perfect hard surface boolean or CAD model or anything like that. No, but it's representative of that shape you're trying to look for here, and you're just having a little bit of fun and playing around with uh, different options. And you can even go through here and say let's like like mask this out, and then from the side here, we wanted to do like maybe. Uh, wait, what are we doing here? Let's do this mask uh, curve. Here. Let's 
trying to come up with some weird um, <laughs> shapes in here uh, that you could do. Uh, you know, you don't need to do anything like that. We can just, again, just kind of go through. And it, the, the problem with this is I'm actually doing a lot of things that wouldn't be that difficult uh, to figure out. But if you are doing this in conjunction with other objects, you need to go through here and just very quickly, um, let's change that back to mask pen here you know, very quickly kind of move stuff around and you don't feel like fiddling with like CAD stuff. I'm gonna bend this down a little bit and I don't wanna deal with that. There we go, this is what I need. Oh, that messed up a little bit, no big deal. All I gotta do is go through and kind of clip that out. Oh, you know what, I want that rounded, no big deal. Uh, again, it's a little bit destructive, not perfect, but you get a representative shape and then you can export this, bring it into say Fusion 360 and you can, you can just set up your sketches around this so you can get it's basically like having a instead of having a 2d image that you have to rebuild you have a 3d proxy that you can use to very go through and very precisely recreate it however you need um yeah zbrush and photoshop exactly cool um so here 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 uh what else we need to do here got this oh yeah so i was looking at him um looks like it's built is a little bit low. So let's go ahead, you know, let's do a move multiple and we'll unhash everything. Let's go back to a select rectangle, it's just a little bit safer for me to use like that. And then now we can go through here and we can raise this up a bit and then we'll turn off move multiple. And let's go ahead and turn off his vest here because we're gonna have to kind of mush this around, it's looking like. So here we have X symmetry turned on, it is symmetrical and Let's go ahead and push this back towards his body a bit. Now you could be more precise. I am technically bending metal at this point. Uh, you could go through and link by link. You could auto group it and move the stuff around. But honestly, I don't care that that much. Not that much of a stickler. And then we'll go through here. Uh, you could also, uh, there's a lot of different ways. Let's talk about it. So here, for instance, you can go through here and we have, oh, so we do have, if you go through here, Polygroups, auto groups, and then do a geometry modified topology mirror and weld um, across the X symmetry. You can hit W and you can just control tap these and you can move them link by link. Uh, you can also go in here if you have underneath your brush here, move topological turned on, and then so move topological means um, you can just go through here and um, dang it, did I have move topological on my standard brush? Make sure you're in your move brush and you can say move topological. Oh my god move brush, move topological, and you can change your range to so anything that's not vert welded. So you can make your brush really big and move these things around. You can also make your brush really small, size of one, and then you can just move these things around independently. I'm not getting a whole lot of movement in every axis that I need, so it might be a little bit easier just to go through here and just control with W, control tap any poly group and just move it around. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, you can also do mass by polygroups. So underneath move, you can turn mass by polygroups on. And since these are all different polygroups, uh, same deal. You can make this really big and just go through here and move uh, different polygroups around or make this really small. And I think the same thing will happen. Yeah. So size of one will give you a little bit of that. But again, I can't, I can't really control. Uh, I guess I can. Yeah, you can use that. I'll allow it. So polyframe here. We kind of gooped around his belt, but again, don't care too much. Uh, what's going on here? Poly frame off, poly paint off, sorry. And then these ones here, same kind of deal. Let's go ahead and make those set in there. It's a little bit nicer. And again, because we don't need him. Uh, hey, Alex, did you start from Dynamesh? Yes, I did. So if you want to, uh, there's two different areas you can get this. So if I go to my stream workshop, these are my backed up ZBrush workshop streams that I've done. So you can go through here and you can watch these here. And then I also have them archived on my YouTube channel. So if you just go to, oh boy, I guess it would be live stream full episodes. I try to mark them all correctly. So you can kind of just step back through my live stream episodes. It looks like they're out of order. I need to go through and reorder them, I suppose. Um, but all the way back here, I think, 806. Oops. Looks like my chat. Sorry, I missed the last few chats there. Said I needed to refresh it. Um, but maybe uh, 8 6 2019. You can go through and you can kind of see uh, the sculpting of this guy through Dynamesh and then Z Remeshing. So, yeah, everything, I think everything on here started with Dynamesh. 
except for maybe the clothing here. So let's say shift and smooth this down a little bit here. All right. Um, what else we want to make? We got this. We got hair blocked in. Let's go ahead and move this around. This is a little bit off. And this thing here. This looks like a little hair tie. So let's go to solo mode. W. Let's go to unmesh mesh center. Let's do a quick mirror and weld, make sure it's the same. And now we can kind of scale that. So it goes around his hair. And then we'll go ahead and hold down Alt, reset that pivot, and then scale it out this way. There we go. Uh, what else? What else? We got his necklace in here. Now he is missing. Oh, you know what? This is where I did it. Um, <laughs> at work, I was playing around with this guy. And uh, so, okay, let's go ahead and put a, a rope or, or a string around this necklace. We'll go ahead and fix this necklace real quick. Uh, necklace real quick. So we're going to duplicate out this body because what I really need access to is this uh, polygroup line right here. Uh, so really what we need is we just need the head and we need the body here. So geometry modified topology. Let's go ahead and geometry, delete lower and also delete hidden. So here, if we go in here to stroke curve functions, uh, frame our polygroups, uh, you'll see we'll get a nice clean uh, line around here. Uh, if I want to put a string through here, I like to use this one that I made. Um, I am in brush. Did I put it in here? There should be a simple... Um, I mean, we've done this a bunch of different times. Think, think, think. Would it be under military? Did I even copy those over? Uh, yeah, it probably is. Boy, these are, these are some old brushes in here. Uh, simple tube. So basically, uh, this simple tube, turn off X symmetry, and then you can just tap on here, and I'll just create that. Uh, you could go in here to BC brush curve tube. Um, right here, brush curve tube, and you could use this. Uh, it just usually, this brush... Uh, it has a little bit, is sometimes a little bit too dense for my liking. Uh, but the cool thing about this is you can go in here to your brush, let's turn mass by probably groups down to zero, um, brush modifiers, and in here you're going to see it's set to 20, so you can drop that, ooh, you can drop that down to like say 11, and that'll go through and uh, change that profile. So when I drag this out, it goes around 11 spans, you can drop that down to like say, well if you drop it down to 1, it'll turn into a flat sheet. Um, three will give you a triangle. So if you think about it, four gives you a uh, square, and if you change that Z intensity down, it turns into a strap, which uh, incidentally is also the settings for brush curve snap, is just basically this. Um, so yeah, a lot of control there, but I like to use my uh, simple tube, and really all the simple tube is. Let's go ahead and tap off here. Let's go to split mass points. And uh, now we have these here. It didn't connect. That's another thing, too, is your curve brush may have connected, but we can fix that real quick. Uh, let's go ahead and go back down to our placeholder here, and we'll say just delete that out of there. And then this will go ahead and fix. So a couple different ways you can fix this. You can bridge to open holes. We grab this purple here, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And then in your Z model brush, BZM, bridge to holes. Spline should be fine. We just go through here and we can connect those back up. Or if you wanted to keep this geometry around, you can say Control W. I don't, you don't have to hit Control-W. In fact, we can just go in here to our poly groups. Let's do group by normals. Grab this normal here, delete hidden, and then you just go through here and you can weld these points. So you can go through here and you can say bridge two points. Not bridge two points, it's a stitch two points. <laughs> here, so you can go through here and you can just like stitch these things together. You can also play around with maybe your weld setting. So if you do a geometry modified topology uh, weld distance, you can kind of crank that up. But the bigger you make it, the more it's going to grab vertices, uh, vertex positions that you don't want to. So we can go ahead and even that out a little bit. So a couple of different ways. Let's go ahead and do an uncrease all under your geometry crease. You can uncrease that. And if you want to smooth all this out a little bit, let's go in here to polish by features open circle and just tap once. That'll kind of smooth it out. You might be saying, well, it made it also thinner. Because it's a cylinder, you can go through here with your deformation inflate, and you can just kind of inflate and deflate uh, as much as you want. So there's kind of a necklace string, and then now we have necklace. Necklace doesn't sound super, uh, super bebop. I wonder what he would call it. 
So here we have uh, the rope string, and then now we can go through here again like we did earlier. We can do auto groups on the belt, and then mirror and weld. And uh, we can go through here and just kind of go through and say, control tap these and move these things around. Or you can move things in mass, just go through here and kind of push and pull things around. And then wherever you have major issues, you can just go through here and just use camera base maybe and kind of pop these things out just a little bit. And make sure you have X symmetry turn on. If it is symmetrical, if it's not, go through one by one. And you don't have to use camera base. You can do it however you'd like. You can set these things nicely. You can hold down Alt and you can kind of arrange these and now you can use this Y rotation to kind of pull these things out. So I'll leave that up to you. And then through here, let's give them a little bit of breathing room here. So we're gonna go through here with this string. We're just gonna kind of pull this string out so it kind of sits in the middle. And then these here, we can kind of pull down a little bit. Again, we're just alt tapping through these sub tools so I don't have to go and hunt over here. I can just alt tap what's on my screen to very quickly kind of select what sub tool I want to work on just using my viewport. There we go. Um, cool, thanks. Glad the videos are helping, Oceans. Happy to do it. Did you ever do a live stream working on armor that once created can be 3D printed and worn? I would love to. Uh, I wish I had a 3D printer. Um, I might be more inclined to learn the intricacies of what's what's good for 3D printing, what's not so good with 3D printing. And also I want to do like maybe uh, take apart toys and do some photogrammetry and bring those in and kind of learn about joint positions and how things articulate correctly based on you know He-Man versus Transformers versus uh, all that kind of stuff, because that, that can be really fun to play with, too. Um, like I like I sent out before, that... Uh, let me see if this is in here. Yeah. This Hasbro presentation kind of goes into a lot of that stuff, where it's how do you make this Star Wars character, uh, number one, be able to be printed, and then number two, um, be able to be extracted from a mold, and what type of plastic you need to use, and also what type of joints you want to use for like rotating heads and stuff. And there's some really cool guides in here, um, articulation and different types of plastics, how injection molds work, and then also yeah, action figure articulation. So different types of rotations and joints that'll get you, depending on what kind of character you're working on and what kind of uh, fidelity and what kind of range of motion you have. Let's send this out again. That kind of thing. Joker. There you go. And also, he has, um, he kind of has, he, oh, you know what? We were working on this skull. Do I still have that? I think I had a hard crash. <laughs> I was working on this turtle skull. There we go. So we worked on this in one of the previous live streams. And uh, we kind of did this. Uh, turtle skull here. I suppose this will work. So if I want to go ahead and just add this to my scene, what is this thing? Solo extraction. These both the same thing. Okay. Uh, B create insert mesh new, and then that way it's a little bit easier for me just to go back in here and go. You know what? Let's just pop this. Let's say X symmetry's on. Oh, did I not have X symmetry on? Dang. Mirror and weld across the X. Well, let's do this. Mirror mirror and all across the X. Uh, then we can just go through here and just drop that right on there and then just do a quick split mass points. And now we have it integrated in our scene. Like so. And I don't think in the cartoon it was a turtle skull. I think it looks more like a, a rodent skull, but a little artistic license. And then he's got some arm bones hanging down there, but I can leave that alone for now. Uh, his vest here, let's drop this down. It's a little snug. We're going to drop this down to division level one, and we're going to kind of move these positions down just a bit. Kind of smooth this out just a little bit. Same thing for this side. This is a little snug in his armpits. This is also another good thing about having subdivision history is I'll, I can move around my big shapes, and then I can always go back up to my high res, uh, and it doesn't really affect my wrinkles too much or my higher fidelity or higher um, frequency detail type things. Now, of course, if you did have a very fine pattern baked into your geometry, uh, you would probably get some pretty nasty stretching, but we haven't gotten there yet, so through here, and I think he's got a little bit of a fold over through here, so we can kind of cut in a little V, and then hold down Alt, and we can kind of... Now, if I was really 
do infidelity work, I would go through here and I would model in like a collar that kind of flapped down and gave us a little bit of a fold over. But if you're just kind of getting it good enough for government work, uh, you can get away with just kind of sculpting that detail in if you're so inclined. It's like they're here. We can go ahead and we can also sculpt in those uh, wrinkles. I'm not too worried about getting that detail back. Um, but yeah, a lot of different ways you can skin that cat. Uh, okay, so knee pads and also the seams in the body. So what we can do, hmm, I don't want to do this. We could do like a simple, we can hit uh, Damien, we can go in like the Damien standard brush and we can just pop in seams like this, but you're gonna see it's not quite as nice as it could be. So what we could do is we can just create our own alpha. So I'm gonna go out of here and we're gonna go into, let's do this, let's make it a little bit cleaner. We're gonna go into turn up proportional. We're gonna say, I think 512 will be fine. 512 by 512 and resize. And then we have this little square here and let's go ahead and grab a plain 3D, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D. And we have this to be able to uh, modify this. Um, let's go in here to geometry turn off smooth modifiers so as, as we subdivide initially. We'll go ahead and keep those nice and, um, uh, the corners nice and tight and then we'll hit smooth modifier off. So now on this one, what I'm looking for is the ability to maybe take, okay, what are we doing here? The mask here invert that mask. Let's go to unmesh my center and can I just like fold this? So we could, there's a world where we could do a vector displacement of this because we are just starting from a cube or a square. Hmm. But we are messing up these edges so I don't know how well that would really work. Well, let's do this. Let's do masking, mask by border, grow, Invert. Yeah, I suppose you could, uh, but that's a little bit ugly. So here's what we're gonna do. Instead of this, we're gonna do um, Control Tap to kind of blur that out a little bit, and we're just gonna pull this out a little bit, maybe rotate it up a little, and then scale it out a little bit. Basically, we're getting uh, a little bit of a line kind of an overlapping line. That's a little bit. And you can also just sculpt this as well. You can hold down shift and use your Damien standard, damn standard, uh, and go through here and get that seam line. And we can also increase that. Uh, you could do that on a layer, uh, but also you can just go through here and change this Z intensity. We can kind of just increase that here. So maybe that'll work. Now if you wanted to do like puckering and stuff like that, let's turn on Z add here. Uh, you can go through and you can add that puckering and you could use your sculpting brushes to kind of put in some of that detail, but I'm, I tend to do that later. So we'll just go ahead and call this our strong seam. Um, you could use the extractor brush on this, but I'm just going to do a quick uh, frame. And you know what, I'm actually going to pull in that a little bit. So I get rid of those little so many things to talk about. NZ plugin, you could also go in here to the Nano Tile Textures plugin. You might have to download this one. Uh, and you can also just do a create, uh, where is that? A create new tile tool. There's a, a can, there's just like a, a tiling sculptable thing. You can, it has wrap turned on how it needs to be uh, and has padding that you can use. I'm just going to do poor man's version of that and just kind of pull this in just a little bit. And we're going to go in here to alpha grab doc. So here's our uh, alpha on here. So now with our standard brush, let's go ahead and turn that off. Standard brush. Uh, we can clone this or we can just take some settings of something we already know we like. So we can try going into maybe our brush menu and we're going to go over here to our stitch and we'll grab this repeating stitch and we'll swap this alpha out. So this already has roll settings turned on. So now if we hold down alt, uh, we get a, um, a nice seam line and you can also go through here with your uh, modif uh, alpha and there is a modify in your mid value here, it's set to 20, uh, which is set up for that brush, but may not be what we want. So we can actually, you know, let's set that to 50. Yeah, set it to zero. 
So you can kind of, there we go, dial it in. So you get a, this is a little bit of a nicer seam than Damien standard. Uh, and you can go through and you can modify this however you'd like. Uh, although this isn't all that much different. If you go in here to the brush, uh, actually you don't even do that. Hit B and then up here in your chisel brushes, you have a lot of these different vector displacement. Um, alphas here, let's go ahead and turn that lazy radius. That's going to be under your stroke menu. So you can kind of go through here and change, do for different vector displacements here and get those kind of cutscenes. But this one kind of folds over a little bit, um, but it doesn't really bump out that much, which concerns me. Let's see intensity down. Oh, I guess it does. So here's our seam and it kind of bumps out on the side and then it kind of folds over a little bit. Now when we grab this, it wasn't a vector displacement, so it doesn't literally fold over. If you wanted it to literally fold over, uh, do I have any of those brushes? Let's see. Uh, you would need uh, something with vector displacement in it, which I think Magic Folds does. Yeah, so these are, you can see the little 3D here, this is vector displacement. Uh, vector displacement maps, so this is geometry pulled. From, okay, if you want more information on this, you can go in here and do a VDM. Uh, VDM and multi-alpha is uh, using Houdini to create your VDMs. It's kind of fun, and I, I updated the HDA in there. Um, so here's a bunch of v, uh, whoops, vector displacement stuff in here. You can check that out. Bam. Uh, okay. So anyway, so now we have that, that seam brush. So now if we like the seam brush. And really, when I grab the stitch, uh, all it really did for me that I like is going in here to stroke, um, I think mouse did it, I think mouse average, eh, that, that looks the same. But it basically turned on um, this roll. <laughs> it's really kind of really all I'm stealing from it, quote unquote. Um, so we go through here and we can say brush, save as, and we'll just do, um, you know what, we'll throw it in. You know, that's, that's, we're gonna say we're gonna use this again. So we're gonna do ZBrush 2020. Uh, we don't need to have it on Z startup brush presets. If I put it in here, it's going to load up a ZBrush every time. I'm not going to use it that much. So we'll go here to Z brushes, and we'll call this. Um, you know, let's put this in our cloth here. We'll call this simple seam. And then uh, this this is a little bit uh, misleading. That thumbnail here. So let's go ahead and change that. Let's go out of edit mode, and let's go ahead and grab a. Uh, I guess a sphere here edit and we'll go ahead and subdivide that up a little bit. Wait, did I make that polymesh 3D? No. Make polymesh 3D. Divide, divide, divide. And then our simple seam, we'll go ahead and just do a put our brush alpha back in there. So we'll just do a simple stroke or we can do a couple if it makes it a little bit easier to see in your thumbnail because this is going to be our thumbnail view. So we'll go ahead and say this is going to be our thumbnail. So brush select icon, hold down alt, and do select icon. So now we have a new uh, thing in there, and then we go to brush, save as, and we'll just save over that simple seam here. So now if you ever need this again, just hit your comma key, go into brush, wherever you had it. Let's go back here, cloth, and now you have a simple seam brush with your little icon in there. So let's go back here, document. Let's turn on W size, new document, no. This will give me a new document that fills up this exact area and it's colored very similar to the background so that's why it looks like it's actually bigger than it is it's really not and now we have here 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 and now we have a simple seam brush that we can use for eternity uh, but we can also use it on our pants if we want to go through here and start um, putting in uh, some seams onto this guy and of course we do have UV map morph UV so it's a lot easier if we go into solo mode here to go through and we could you know put in let's go on turn off X symmetry you can go through and uh, we can poly paint first where these seams need to go so if I need to put a seam like right through here and then we unmorph it uh, you're gonna see BAM right there doesn't get any easier than that right as opposed to like going through here and be like oh I hope these match up oh no I can't get in that space it's a little bit uh, hard to sculpt in there so use it to your advantage um, let me get caught up here. Uh, let me, oops, I'm way behind, sorry. Uh, let's see. Actually, uh, one person I work with at work, let me see. 
you can follow him on our station maybe. Uh, he does a lot of 3D printing, so Fletcher Kinnear here. Um, one thing on here, let me see if he has his, does he have a blog? Um, no. Uh, those are our station blogs. Uh, but he, he does a ton of 3D printing stuff, like big, big, big 3D printing. This is a little bit older. Um, but he does, he does a ton of 3D printing wearable type things. So follow him. You might, he might have um, some cool 3D printed stuff coming out soon. Cool. Um, you're really talented. Well, thank you. Can you 3D print the figure out if you wanted to with the software you're using? Yes, you can. So if I go through here, let's turn off solo mode. In fact, uh, there's a Z plugin in here, which has a lot of cool stuff in it for 3D printing specifically. Uh, so there's two things. Actually, if you go through here and you do an export, you can do, you can just grab, it used to be you had to go through like um, plugins, like over here you see FBX export, you can now just do that from the export menu. And so you can just choose if you want to export, like it's an STL, for example, if you wanted to stereolithographic it up. Uh, but there's also a 3D print hub in here where you can import and export um, STL, VRML, OBJs, export options, and stuff like that. Um, you can update size ratios, but probably um, under for your size and stuff, you can probably use Scale Master. Might give you a little bit. But anyway, you can do you can do either of them. Um, also, there's a lot of cool here for 3D printing under the 3D Print Hub. If you click on here, uh, let's see. Okay, that doesn't give us any more information. Sometimes there will be like little videos or a little image in here. Um, so there's that. A ton of people 3D print out of ZBrush, and that's uh, what he uses in here in the Hasbro thing, is a bunch of ZBrush tools and draft analysis and thickness analysis, stuff like that. Um, I don't know that they were using ZBrush 2020, like if he's on the beta or anything like that, but um, a lot of the things he talks about as far as like controlling thickness and stuff, um, for your 3D prints and stuff like that, uh, they go over. And then you have all those thickness tools we talked about today. Uh, can you try to do a ponytail with hair mesh and want to know how to do stitches and modeling? Um, stitches and modeling is pretty easy. You just need a repeating um, stitch here. So if we undo that seam that we did. Um, and also it, the ability to work on a proxy is kind of nice. So what I like to do is go, like, go here to subtool. Uh, let's do a little append and we're just going to append this null um, mesh out here. We'll go ahead and turn on X symmetry and we'll go ahead and scale this down. So now we got it sitting like inside our mesh, just out of the way. So with that, I can now use like curve brushes and put that on anything without having to worry about like, oh, you have subdivision history and it having it yell at us. So for instance, uh, just a real quick example, um, here's geometry stitches. So you can go through here and you can grab, um, and these are from Pablo Munoz Gomez, but you can make your own. It's fairly easy to do. Like um, if you needed like a specific stitch, let's go through here and we'll go down here to initialize. Then we'll say Q cube. And we'll say scale this out a little bit here. And we'll say maybe bevel edge loop complete here. And then we'll say mirror and weld. And then control alt drag with our X symmetry turned on. And we'll go ahead and say, let's go ahead and rotate this down around a little bit like so. And this can be like the start of our stitch. And let's go ahead and scale this in a little bit. We'll thin this out. And then over here, we can alt grab these ones. And we can just go through. And again, just kind of make this into a stitch. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do hit control W to a polish by features open circle. And we'll just kind of polish that down. Or that might be a bit much. Let's do close circle. Maintain our volumes a little bit. And now we have a stitch-ish. So we can go through here and we can make this thinner or thicker. And if we want to repeat this stitch, all you got to do is basically hit B, create insert mesh, new stroke, uh, curve mode. And then now you basically have a stitch. And if you want to control like how close they are, Go in here to stroke uh, curve step and we'll kind of space those out a little bit so you can kind of space them out. And then now you have stitches that you can drop. Uh, now these are geometry stitches. Of course, you want to do anything fancier. You can just control, um, let's control drag this. Oops, control drag out a copy. And we can do like cross stitches like this. And then um, same deal. Uh, just, we're just basically going top to bottom. Uh, and if we want this to overlap a little bit, let's do um, auto groups, W control tap this and kind of pull this out. Now you want to be careful uh, if you do something like this, let's say, you know, I want to do, uh, let's do W, control tap this poly group, control drag this out, and then we'll do maybe three. And then we go through here and we say um, auto groups. 
And then now if you try to do this one, so for instance, you go brush, create an insert mesh, uh, we can actually append this to our previous one here. And so now we have this stitch we can use and this stitch we can use. Uh, it might even keep curve mode on for us. <clears throat> so now we can use this one and now you're gonna say, wait, what is it doing? I have this and then this and then it's repeating this one in the middle. That's because whenever you have three poly groups by default in your brush settings here, you have, let's go ahead and hit R to clean that up a little bit. Uh, underneath uh, modifiers here, you have triparts turned on. This enables you to do things like uh, have two anchor points. So brush, curve, nope, brush, insert, uh, I don't know, curve. Here's like this chain. You have um, two anchor points in a repeating middle. So the purple and the green will always be anchor points and then their middle will repeat as you create more and more of this chain here. You're gonna see the anchor points are the same, but it just repeats this middle. Uh, it so And that's controlled by having three different polygroups. So you have this polygroup, this polygroup, this polygroup. Uh, however, in this instance, we don't want that. We just wanna have this object repeating. So you can fix this by either hitting Control W to make this all one polygroup, or you can just turn off right parts. And then now when you do it, um, oops. I turn off try parts for that brush. Uh, so now if you turn off try parts for this brush, it'll behave as necessary and you get to keep your polygroups. Or like I said, you can hit control W and just do that. So anyway, here's these stitches like so. So if you wanted to apply this to your character, uh, you can do it kind of like we did the choker earlier. You just grab here. And in fact, if you want to put this uh, on all of his polygroups here, um, you can go in here to stroke and you can just frame all the polygroups. Or if you just want to put it like around the neck, um, like we did earlier, you can just grab these two here and then now you can stroke frame the polygroup mesh. And then you can put your stitches, again, turn off X symmetry. Uh, although it's probably gonna yell at us. So let's do, you can do free set of vision. I don't like doing that. Let's go ahead and say, let's duplicate that off temporarily. Let's go back up to this one and we'll say geometry, delete lower, bam, oops. So when you apply this stitch, uh, if, if it's not sitting in the mesh as much as you'd like, just go in here to depth and just, let's, you know, let's embed that to zero, see how that does. There we go. So now it embeds nicely along that mesh here. Let's do a hide point. That's gonna be under your visibility hide point. Control shift dragged invert that, geometry modified topology delete hidden. And now you have separate stitches. So if you turn off his choker here and his little string, now you can see he's got a little uh, Frankenstein stitches. Now, of course, you don't have to do geometry stitches if you don't want. I like to do geometry stitches just because um, it's a little bit less destructive and I have a little bit more control. But just like when we were doing our ZBrush 2020 demo, if I hit Control D on this one here, we can go through here. Let's go into solo mode and let's say we want to make some stitches. Let's make this really Frankenstein this guy up. So. There you go, four million, that should be fine. Uh, so for instance, we can go through here and we can use Damien's standard. Oh, did I get rid of my alpha? Brush. Uh, make sure you save your brushes before you do this, but let's do reset all brushes. Then we'll go back to Damien's standard. Uh, so for instance, we can go through here and we can create, uh, and well, before we do that, let's do a quick color. Let's go skin shader for mrgb color fill object. So for instance, we have this here and now we're gonna be sculpting. So mrgb we can turn off. So we wanna sculpt, actually let's turn uh, rgb on and we'll go in here and we'll do like, we'll get a little frankenstein with it. So we'll go ahead and like cut in a nice sore there and then we'll go in here with our pinch brush and we'll go ahead and pinch that back up. And then we'll go back in here with our history recall. And we'll go, you know what, let's go back to where before we had this, control tap, and we'll go here. And I want a nice eve, I want a nice um, thing to put stitches across here. So I'm just gonna history recall this back so we can kind of go back to our original uh, mesh there. And then now we're gonna go back into our standard brush. And for our standard brush, we're gonna go ahead and give this some Let's go ahead and crank that Z intensity up. Let's turn lazy radius off. And really quickly, we can just go through here and we'll turn on RGB and Z add. So we can go through here. Actually first, let's turn off Z add. Let's go in here and we'll do again, we'll kind of fill this in with some dark red. We can actually hit C over these and we can steal that color. So we'll go ahead and put some little 
inflamed areas in here. And then we'll go in here with maybe a stitch RGB Z had turned on. And now we can put our stitches in here. Let's go ahead and crank the intensity up a little bit. And if you're not getting enough leeway in your draw uh, preferences, draw dynamic brush scale, I'm going to put this down to like maybe 0.5, and that'll give me a little bit more wiggle room in the low end here. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit more stitch looking and crank that. Sorry, trying to dial this in just right. Stitch, stitch, stitch. Uh, so we got this. I'm going here to BXT for our extractor brush. Let's go and make our brush big enough to grab what we need. Hit G and then just drag over this. And that's going to capture our Z information uh, and our texture information. So now we can go through and we can just sit here and do Frankenstein all day long. And um, oops, make sure you. Make sure you're kind of looking. Now, if you did want these to match up exactly from where you left off, you can go up here to Stroke Lazy Mouse. There's a lazy snap. So if you turn that up, um, wherever your stroke stops, you don't have to get it exactly. It'll um, it'll pick back up. You can also go in here to your, uh, I like to do this in my chisel brushes as well. Go here to Tablet Pressure. For this particular brush, you know, in fact, let's do this. Let's do Clone. I'm going to clone this brush off because let's say I want to have this Frankenstein um, brush available later on or something like that. Uh, I can go in here to Z intensity, crank that up. We're going to make this uh, look like a mouse uh, in size. We'll go ahead and crank these up. So now um, the, it, it kind of basically turns off my pressure so I can still use my uh, Wacom tablet, um, but it'll keep my stitches nice and uniform. And then wherever I last stroked, uh, it'll go ahead and pick that back up. So you can use that if you'd like. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, my, my old ZBrush stuff. Yeah, it is easy model ZBrush. I remember my first ZBrush memory, ZBrush 2.5. They did um, that, that fish, that angler fish, where they were just pulling polygons out. And I was like, what? You can just sculpt in 3D? This was like 2004, 2003, maybe even. Um, cool. Uh find it quite frustrating to build a whip and creating a curve insert. Um, if you want, like, I would, if you're doing like a coiled whip, uh, I would start with maybe this primitive here. This might be a little bit better. So you can go through here with these initialized settings. Then you can change, let's change this radius here. Let's go and pull that off. And then if you play around with this type of thing, Trying to see how you can you can you can coil it in ways that like radius Z offset. Yeah, let's like stick that on each other and then go back here to thickness we want to have pretty uniform coverage and then offset kind of lay on each other and then uh, twist. You can have it twist around each other. It's not going to help you that much. Hmm. Somewhere in here is the ability to kind of do like coils on top, of, or or you know what you else else you could do um, in here underneath your array brushes, you can do you can do coils like that. So maybe, um, oops, yeah, make poly mesh 3D. So for instance, you can have you can coil any shape, so you could conceivably do that, but whip. Uh, yeah, let's start with the helix and play with those settings to see if you can get a good coil. Um, I'm trying to think, there's probably a more elegant solution than that. If you wanted to, um, you could even do, th you could do threading around a cone and have a coil around a cone even, and then do the Z scale and then frame that. Ooh, that's a tough one. I'd have to think about that one. As far as like a really cool, easy one. <laughs> uh, oh, ponytail with hair mesh and how to do uh, stitches modeling. Okay, so we went through that. Um, ponytail with hair, I'm, I don't think I'm going to have enough time to get to that, but if you do go to my YouTube channel here, 
we can try and make a whip I'm trying to think uh, but I got a lot of hair techniques on here so um, you know like this is probably your best bet and this wouldn't be that difficult to do like either hair made from well I mean if you wanted to do fiber mesh hair you got to do a little bit of sculpting or a little bit of grooming I should say um, but in that case what would that be fiber mesh fiber mesh poly paint fiber mesh fiber mesh fur render eh, I don't have a whole lot on fiber mesh <clears throat> <laughs> um, what's one technique in ZBrush you've learned that really simplified your workflow uh, simplified my workflow is probably my custom menu so if you go through here and you do actually you no know, it'd probably be easier if you go through this playlist here this new intro to ZBrush ZBrush for ideation uh, in here is like 56 videos um, it didn't allow me to copy or not copy but like have the folder videos from what's new 2018 I think in this area, or maybe it's 2019, I forget. Um, so you'll have to go through the What's New playlist too, um, but this should get you caught up. And in here is like custom menu, hotkeys, and stuff like that. So this this really simplifies my ability to work in ZBrush. So a lot of stuff, if you if you find yourself constantly over here, just put it in a custom menu. And ZBrush is super easily customizable. Um, okay, yeah, it's a good, a uh, bear wolf fish, uh, as far as like controlling curves, um, is also another way that's what I was thinking is like if you could make a helix and then you could put a curve down that and then you could replace it with like a whip insert mesh but I'm trying to trying to get that helix to work correctly and I'm also trying to think is there a way Ooh, where I could coil something easily without that helix and I'm, I'm, I'm coming up blank uh, or yeah uh, there's a I'm gonna read this name Gerald Matey's uh, says uh, disable pressure and preferences. So you can go into preferences and somewhere in here, I'm not really sure exactly where, but somewhere in here you can go through and you can just say turn off. I wonder if that's a global setting too that you could use because this is use global settings. Use global tablet preference settings. So I bet that's where that is. And then uh, tablet, tablet, tablet. Eh. Somewhere in here there's uh, settings for that. Um, I think it's straight and then using a bend deformer to make the coil. Yeah, you could do that too. So let's let's do that. Um, and then I don't know where the bend deformer is. Oh, okay. So in my videos, YouTube videos, there's like ZBrush 2019, 2018, what's new. They go into a lot of the deformer stuff here. Uh, we can talk about that. There's also a ring. I can do a ring. And I can move it up and I can bridge. Hmm. There's a spiral 3D. That's probably what I want, huh? So in here, uh, initialize coverage, twist, divide. I don't want it to fall off. Is there a way for me to say uh, radius is overall, thickness is overall, coverage is overall displaced. I mean I can get rid of, I can change that so it's not a huge deal. I was just wondering if there was a hollow that's neat um, okay well okay let's say uh, we want this to be our whip so we're gonna go ahead and say let's change our radius back and also our thickness back a little bit twist this way you, you, you can see I don't use this very often what is this displace okay so we can kind of coil it this way Uh, and then coverage, we can coil that a little bit tighter. So play around with these settings. And then uh, we do have this taper, which I'm surprised there's not a way to get rid of this taper, but I guess that's part of this uh, thing. So if you wanted to bypass the helix and deal with this taper, you can. Uh, not a huge deal though, we can get rid of this. So we can go through here and let's do a quick um, make poly mesh 3D. And we're gonna go through here and we're gonna do a, uh, oops, group by normals. And we're gonna hold down control shift. We're just gonna grab this top piece here. So basically what I'm looking for is just grabbing two of these pieces here and then we're gonna go ahead and get rid of maybe actually we can probably get rid of more than that like a, a whip isn't gonna coil that tightly as we can go through here and we can just like delete out maybe all the way up through here um, this reminds me um, of the Junji Ito comic um, horror manga that's based on spirals it's really creepy so you can check that out if you're into that stuff uh, so we can go through here we can do a polygroup poly loop here. So here, 
and then here, so now that we have these two, we can control shift tap these ones and then delete hidden. And now we can go, remember how we were doing this all day, we can go here to stroke frame mesh polygroups and then we can go through here. Uh, you know what, let's just use our, you can bring in any whip thing. I think if you've got like rope, we got hair, I don't have any rope in here, but you can make your own rope. Um, you know, we can put, we'll, we'll, call, we'll say this is our um, whip here. So you can go through here and let's go ahead and drop, drop our brush depth down to zero and we'll embed this a little bit more. Oops, there we go. So now um, you can maybe do that. So then uh, if you can't like right, like tap off your mesh to get rid of the curve, uh, you can just go in here to stroke and just say delete curve. And then we're gonna go ahead and say again, hide point, control shift drag, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And then that's kind of a whip maybe. And then if you wanna put a handle on this, I mean, obviously it's a hair whip right now, but um, you get the idea. Let's go through here. and Actually, let's do this. Let's do uh, geometry modified topology. You can use your Z modeler brush or you can just go in here to close holes. And then now we can just grab that handle here and just put a little, let's go split mass points. And we'll say divide, crease, crease, crease. There you go. Bit of a whip. Uh, controlling curves, yeah. Uh, but yeah, let me, I can um, link that too. Thank you for bringing that up. Curves helper, controlling ZBrush curves. I think I do it a couple of times, and I also think, actually, uh, one, one area you guys might like my profile is underneath this ZBrush Summit 2018. Uh, these videos right here, one through 96, I talk a lot about controlling curves and also my presentation uh, at ZBrush. We get into controlling curves a little bit here so you can see hair, uh, controlling curves for like different layered hair effects and then also making tubes and twisting those tubes around each other for like mech uh, purposes. So all this stuff, you might, you might get a kick out of that. Go check that out. Cool. Oh yeah, Ben Deformer. So that, yeah, I go through that in that video as well. But just just to say we talked about it. Uh, let's go grab a cylinder here, edit. Um, you know what, we can just do this. Make Polymesh 3D. Because we can always just change this. So it's like, okay, I want a tube and I want to bend this tube around. Well, I don't like that division here. Let's so go to Geometry, Edge Loop, Delete Loops, and then use your Z Modeler brush to go in here and insert multiple edge loops. Uh, you can pull these in. You can also do Interactive Elevation. So you go interactive elevation, then you can just pull these through and you can kind of fatten it up a little bit if you want. Or you could even thin it out a little bit. But in this case, I just want to divide it up. Uh, so specified elevation zero. So go through here and then ring, and then hit W. And uh, we can even scale this down a little bit and thin it out just a little. And then now in here, this gear, you can go into uh, bend curve. Uh, so you can go through here and you can change. Um, so there's bend arc and there's bend curve. Uh, if you want, you can use bend curve if you want a little bit more fidelity to kind of go through here and kind of just pull these things around. And then you can like twist, twist along that little axis so you can scale it out or you can squash it in. Uh, or if you want to go through here and do like a bend arc, you can go through here and just bend this tube around. So in fact, if we just had a tube here and we switch that to bend arc, um, you can just bend that into a circle. Uh, calling a model or a sculptural tool in the view paste. Yeah, exactly. If you can get over the hurdle of this being a document and an object being a tool and a subtool uh, and a file save as being a Z project, which has both, then uh, it's all downhill from there. How to divide some polygroups and not the whole mesh. You can do local subdivisions. So if you have like control shift here and you can just hit control D and that'll just locally subdivide. Uh, it gets a little bit messy around the uh, corners there, but you can do that. Yes, uh, and also, um, like Bear Wolfish is saying, let's see, is it mask? Oops. Yeah, so whatever your unmasked portion is, so just invert that mask and then subdivide, subdivide, subdivide. Uh, you can also do it with visibility, but I suppose that's similar. Um, it's pretty rare that I would want to do that, but um, you could do that. All right, it's eight o'clock. 
Thanks, everybody. Hopefully there was some good stuff in there for everybody. Uh, again, I didn't have much of an agenda. Maybe we'll get back to, you know, getting this guy uh, blocked out here. Um, but, ooh, now here's, here's the thing. Do I want to pull all of these stitches back off of him before I save it? Oh, I think I have a version saved where I don't need to worry about that too much. Um, yeah, all right. We'll call this, and just in case, you know what? It doesn't hurt to save iteratively. So we're going to go in here to streaming, turtle power, be about 15, 16. There we go. And we're good to go. Cool. Thanks, everybody. I will see you. Uh, so Thursday, I'll be all stream on my channel. This is on Pixelector's channel. And um, we can just continue on there. I'm probably not going to have too much of an agenda for Thursday either. But okay.